This is the Atari game Sequest. You control the yellow submarine on the right and you have to torpedo the green fish and also enemy submarines which turn up every now and then. And all the while your oxygen is running out. Here I've just fired a torpedo and it's about to hit the fish. And now I've hit it and my score goes up to 60. This game was famously analysed by DeepMind in the work that kickstarted the deep reinforcement learning revolution and led eventually to AlphaGo. Let me replay these screenshots starting from the beginning and this time we'll also look at a plot that DeepMind produced. In this plot the x-axis is time and the y-axis is what's called a value function. The value function measures how good it is to be in any particular game state measured in terms of how many points the player can expect to get from this point onwards. At this instant in time, the fish on the left has just appeared and the neural network thinks that the player has a good chance of gaining points, so the value function is heading up. And now, a few frames later, just before the player's torpedo hits, the value function is very high because the neural network is very confident we will actually gain the points. And now it's gone back down to its baseline level because there aren't any imminently foreseeable points to win. So just to say it once more, the value function is a function of the current state and it measures the expected future rewards that might be gained starting from that state. Let's write that out properly. And here is the fundamental equation of dynamic programming due to Richard Bellman. Let's translate the maths into words. This equation says that when we are in state V, we have a choice about our next action. Let's call the next action A. When we pick a particular action, we'll get some immediate reward. That's this first term here, an immediate reward that's a function of our current state V and the action we're taking. And then we'll transition to some new state, that's this term here, the next state depending on where we are now and what action we took. And from that next state onwards, there's a certain amount of future reward that we're going to gain. And that's exactly what the value function f is there to measure. OK, that's the Bellman equation. And it is the fundamental equation of dynamic programming and reinforcement learning. What I want to talk about in this video is the link between dynamic programming and shortest path algorithms for graphs. There is a, a genuine link here. Bellman invented this equation to solve planning problems. And as we saw in the last video, planning problems are basically shortest path graph problems. So how should we apply this equation to graphs? What should the states be? What are the actions and what are the rewards? There's a magic leap of creativity that's needed here. It's one of the sparks of real cleverness to do what Bellman did and reconceptualize a problem. Let me propose a function. Let's define f sub destination comma t of v to be the minimum weight among all paths that go from v to the destination and that have less than or equal to t edges. We'll see in a moment what this equation has to do with the Bellman equation. But first, let's just see how the function behaves in a concrete example. Let's say we're trying to reach the vertex d and we're allowed one edge. What's the minimum weight of all paths from C to D that have at most one edge? There is only one path, the direct path, and it has weight three. The next case is a bit weird. What's the minimum weight among all paths that go from D to D and have at most one edge? Now, the convention that we used before, both for Dijkstra and for Bellman Ford, is to say that there's a sort of zero edge path from any vertex to itself, which has weight zero. And that's what this case is referring to. And what about the minimum weight among all paths from B to D that use at most one edge? There aren't any such paths, so it's the minimum of an empty set, and the only sensible value to assign it is infinity. OK, next up, paths with two edges paths with up to two edges. This one will be a bit easier to think about because there aren't as many special cases. 
What's the minimum weight among all paths from B to D that have up to two edges? There is only one possibility, the path via C, and this path has weight 5, and so on for the other vertices. Now for the magic, where our brain flips, and we start to think of this as a game where we choose actions. Let's go back to the definition of F, and let's think about it as a choice problem. Here's an intimidating looking equation, but let's decompose it. If I want to go from V to D in less than or equal to T edges, we have a choice. We can first hop to one of V's neighbours, let's call it W. We'll incur a certain cost by doing so, i.e. the weight of that VW edge. And then we'll be left with the task of getting from W to our destination D with up to T minus one edges. And the minimum weight for doing that is just our F function. Of course, we should choose our first hop W strategically. There's a trade-off between the immediate cost of jumping to W versus the future cost we'll incur getting from W to the destination. But there's also another choice. If we want to get from V to D with a path of less than or equal to T edges, a path with less than or equal to T minus one edges is certainly legitimate. We can think of this as choosing the action stay at V as our initial action, leaving us with the job of getting from V to D in up to T minus one edges. And our convention that stay at a vertex is basically a path with weight zero means that the equation just works out nicely. And let's write out the boundary case. If we only have zero edges left to go, the minimum weight is zero if we're already at our destination, infinity otherwise. Okay, so this gives us a recurrence equation and an initial state equation. So we can just solve them iteratively. Start at t equals zero, then compute the solution for t equals one, then t equals two, and so on, as far as you want to go. Okay, but now this is all a bit weird. The shortest path problem on a graph just asks, what is the minimum weight path between a pair of vertices? And it doesn't say anything at all about a time horizon. We introduced the time horizon and it gave us a nice computable recurrence equation, but that's no good if it doesn't solve the problem we originally wanted to solve. Now, happily it does if we choose the time horizon right and there's a theorem to prove it. Pause the video and have a quick read through of this theorem. This theorem tells us that if we set the time horizon to be V minus one, where V is the number of vertices in the graph, then our value function F gives us minimum weights, the minimum weight over paths of any length. And so this theorem pretty much tells us directly an algorithm for computing minimum weights. We just solve the Bellman recurrence equation up to time V minus one. Incidentally, there's a nifty way to implement this using matrices, when which finds the minimum weights between all pairs of vertices in the graph, when which is just three lines of code long. It's amazing how concisely you can write code when you have powerful maths and algebra behind you. Think how many lines of code it takes to write out Dijkstra's algorithm. Now, this theorem has a restriction. It requires that the graph shouldn't have any negative weight cycles. We've come across the problem of negative weight cycles before. We know, of course, if there are negative weight cycles, then some minimum weights will be equal to minus infinity. Now, we could, if we like, augment our algorithm here along the lines of Bellman Ford to detect whether or not there are negative weight cycles. And if we worked even harder, we could figure out the cases where it's appropriate to return minus infinity. But all of that's left as an exercise for the viewer. What I want to do instead in this video is prove the theorem as it stands and explain why this condition about no negative weight cycles permits us to set a time horizon equal to V minus one. The proof's actually pretty simple. I want to argue that there must be a minimum weight path with less than or equal to V minus one edges. I'm certainly not going to try to prove that every minimum weight path from V to D has less than or equal to V minus one edges. There might be some paths with more edges. I'm just going to argue that there exists some path 
with below equal to v minus 1 edges, which is a min weight path. Let's pick an arbitrary minimum weight path from v to d. It starts at v, hops around a bit, possibly has one or more cycles in it, and eventually reaches d. Now, let's count up how many vertices there could be in this path. If the path has more than v vertices along it, then there must be a cycle. There are only v distinct vertices in the entire graph, so if this path has a length more than v vertices, at least one of them must be repeated, and therefore there must be a cycle. And what did we say about cycles? We said that the graph has no negative weight cycles. Therefore, if our path has a cycle, it must be a cycle with weight above or equal to zero. So we can just excise it from our path and we'll end up with another path that has fewer vertices and is at least as good. We can keep doing this until eventually we end up with a path with no cycles and because it has no cycles it must have below or equal to v vertices, in other words it must have below, below or equal to v minus 1 edges. So what we've shown is that between any pair of vertices there is a minimum weight path with less than or equal to v minus 1 edges. Therefore, if we restrict ourselves to paths with less than or equal to v minus 1 edges, which is what our value function f does, we'll certainly find minimum weights, qed. Okay, so we've figured out how to find minimum weights using value functions and the Bellman equation for dynamic programming. But before we finish, I just want to say a bit more about the Bellman equation. In this case, we wrote down a nice, clean, simple recurrence equation, and we could solve it step by step, starting from the base case and working up. And the entire computation takes time big O of v cubed log v, and we're working with v by v matrices. Now, for any interesting problem, v cubed log v and even v squared are complete and utter nightmares. So let's turn back to DeepMind and the Atari game Sequest and say a little bit about how DeepMind solved the Bellman equation in practice. We solved the Bellman equation to find the value function exactly, but what DeepMind found is that it's good enough to solve it approximately. And they figured out how to train a neural network to come up with a good approximation. All of their cleverness was in figuring out how do you build a data set that you can use to train the neural network, which is to learn an approximation to the value function.